Hello and welcome to the first Akitech SPC 210 short preview. In this video, we'll demonstrate how to connect, configure and program the SPC 210 programmable controller. We will be using the web configurator, the CodeSys programming environment, and we will also show how to connect the device to the Akitech cloud service. First off, we'll access the web configurator. To do this, you'll need to connect the device to your PC via a USB Type-B or Ethernet cable. Note that the USB connection does not require an external power supply. Additionally, when using Ethernet, both the PC's and SPC's Ethernet adapters must be configured with static IP addresses. After connecting the device, open a web browser and enter the device's IP address. The default IP addresses are 192.168.0.10 if you are using the Ethernet cable and 10.0.6.10 if you are using the USB cable. You can also find both IP addresses by powering on the device and tapping the screen once after the loading bar appears to switch the starting mode from CodeSys to Config and log in using the password Akitech all in lowercase. After navigating to the Networks tab, you will see the device's IP addresses. Back in the Web Configurator, you can log in using the same password. Once logged in, you will have access to all device information, network interface details, statistics, and be able to download a device template for the CodeSys environment. Head over to the PLC Download section and click Download. If CodeSys is not yet installed, download and install the 3.5 v17 patch 3 version. After starting up CodeSys, navigate to Tools, CodeSys Installer, then select Install File to install the appropriate CodeSys package. Once installed, create a new project using the SPC templates. Select the SPC category and choose either the 07 or 10 template based on your model. Name your project and choose a save location. To connect to the SPC 210, double-click the device node in the project tree. Go to Communication Settings and click Scan Network. Once the device appears, double-click on it to establish the connection. We can now write basic programs and deploy the project to the device. First, you can navigate to the PLC PRG program block. This is the project's main program block, which is set by the template to use the structured text programming language by default. If you prefer to work with other programming languages, such as ladder diagram or function block diagram, you can delete the existing PLC PRG block and add a new program organization unit, POU. Simply type the name PLC underscore PRG, select the program type, and choose your preferred programming language. Once that is done, we can start by defining variables. For example, we will define two Boolean variables and two variables of type real to create a simple program where we will control a digital output by toggling a digital input from false to true. And for example, simulate measurements of temperature and pressure. Next, we will navigate to the visualization block. This is the layout of our SPC 210 starting screen where we add visualization elements. Here we will add a switch and a lamp element as well as two slider elements to simulate temperature and pressure measurements. In the property section, we'll configure each element separately. We will link the Boolean variables to their respective elements, link the variables of type real to the slider elements, and set the lower and upper limits for both of them. To test whether the program is functioning correctly, click Login. Then click Start. Next, you can change the values of the variables and observe how the corresponding outputs change. 
You can do this either in the PLC PRG or the visualization block. To monitor temperature and pressure values, we can add a trend visualization element and configure it accordingly. First, we can add a separate visualization block for our trend chart and drag the trend visualization element from the toolbox. First, we can choose whether we want our trends to be recorded within a specific time interval or depending on the task execution. After choosing one of the two, we'll set up the default y-axis to monitor the temperature and then add another y-axis to monitor the pressure. Back in the Trend Recording Manager node, we will click Add Variable in the bottom left corner, link the variables and their corresponding axes, and configure their appearance on the trend chart. We can also set upper and lower limits and choose a different color for the trend if those values are exceeded. We can also add elements that allow us to manipulate the chart. Therefore, we can show different time intervals choose which variables will be visible, etc. Now, let's check how the trend behaves as the variables change. As you can see, when we adjust the values, the trend line updates in real time. The colors also change based on the limits we set. Next, we will incorporate alarms into our project. First off, we'll create an alarm configuration object under the application node. There are three alarm classes, error, warning, and information. Let's say you want to work with the error class. To archive these alarms, check the archiving box. Next, to make sure alarms can be acknowledged, choose one of the acknowledgement methods. Here, we will use the ACK underscore REP method. That way, the alarm will become inactive once it has been acknowledged and the cause has been resolved. You can also customize how errors appear depending on whether they're active, waiting for confirmation or acknowledged. Next, add a new alarm group and select the alarm storage archiving parameter. You can also set a limit for how many alarms can be stored by limiting the capacity of the storage. Once that's done, you can define the alarms, choose their type, set their message, and specify how they will be triggered. After configuring the alarms, you can add an alarm table to the visualization block and customize it by adding columns for alarm timestamps, alarm messages, acknowledgement timestamps, etc. In addition, you can customize the color of the selected alarm and include buttons for alarm manipulation. Now, let's launch the downloaded project and test how these alarms work. We'll simulate all three alarms at the same time, acknowledge them, and then reset all parameters to their normal values. In addition, we can check the alarm history in the same place. While the program is running, the alarm storage can be exported to a CSV file. Next, we will try to connect Akitech MX110 series module without using the appropriate template over RS485, as well as Akitech MX210 series module using a template over Ethernet. First, we need to configure the adapters. 
We'll start off by configuring the first RS485 adapter, the board rate, parity, data bits and stop bits, so that they match the configuration of the device we will connect to the SPC. Then we'll add a master device to the adapter and a slave device to the newly added master device. In the master device node, we'll check the auto restart communication box. This ensures that the system will automatically try to reconnect to the module in case the communication is interrupted. In the slave device node, we'll specify the slave address. Next, we'll add a channel to the configuration. More specifically, the first analog input of the module. Since this value is stored across two registers, we'll enter the starting register address that corresponds to the first analog input and set the length to 2. Following this, we'll define two word type variables that will be stored on these registers and map them. Note that the register order, most significant or least significant register first, must be considered. This information often depends on the manufacture of the device. To ensure that the variables are updated regularly, select the Enable To option in the bottom right corner. Finally, we'll define a union data unit type that will combine the two word variables and create a new variable of type real that will hold the temperature value. We'll need an array that will hold two variables as well as an output variable. Let's create a visualization to display the value read from the MX110 module. I'll add a text label, bind the required variable and set its color and font type. Then, I'll download the updated program and check how it looks. After connecting the sensor to our MX110 module, connecting the module to our SPC controller, powering it on and running the program, the current room temperature measurement will be seen in our CodeSys project, as well as on the screen of the SPC. By utilizing the appropriate template files, the process of connecting the MX210 module will be much more straightforward. First, we need to install the template file. Next, we'll configure the Ethernet adapter by selecting the correct network interface. Then add a Modbus TCP master device, as well as the appropriate model of the module. In the master device settings, we'll check the auto reconnect box. For the newly added slave device, we'll enter its static IP address and configure the first analog input according to the sensor type connected to it under the Parameters tab in CodeSys. Then we'll create a new variable of type real and map it to this input. To connect the SPC to the Akitec cloud service, access to the internet is required. Also, the IP address cannot be static, but rather needs to be assigned by the DHCP protocol. Since we've been using the Ethernet adapter to connect the SPC to the MX210 module, we can now switch the protocol to DHCP via the web configurator. Next, we will create a new project and define two variables one of type integer and the other of type real. We can also add comments as a way to describe the meaning of these values. 
For example, the integer variable can be called counter, while the real variable can be called temperature. Next, we'll add a symbol configuration object into the project and ensure to include comments in the XML format. We will then proceed to configure the object's comments and attributes by checking all the boxes. Once the configuration is complete, we'll initiate the build process and select the checkboxes next to the variables we defined earlier. After successfully connecting to the device and running the program, we'll proceed to the cloud service interface to register the device. We will select the SPC210 over Ethernet auto detection device type, input the device's serial number, assign a meaningful name, and configure the appropriate time zone. Once the new device has been created, we'll enter the device's password which can be retrieved from the Akitech Cloud node within the CodeSys project tree. After the device is recognized as online, we can modify the values of the variables directly within the CodeSys environment. These changes will be reflected in real time on the cloud, and any updates made on the cloud will similarly be synchronized with the CodeSys environment. That's all for today. Thanks for sticking with us until the end. I promise the next videos in this course will be shorter and even more informative. So, make sure to subscribe to the channel and leave a comment about what you'd like to see from our creators. Wishing you all the best and see you in the next video.